Uh, I just need them to associate with Kia, the candidate for Congress, <laughs> not Kia, the car company. Um, I heard Bill Clinton once say that every politician wants you to think they were born in a log cabin that they built themselves. Um, I was not. Uh, my, my parents are both immigrants from Iran, um, and they came to Irvine, and I grew, I grew up here. Um, born and raised here, I went to Irvine Public Schools, and I'm a proud graduate of Northwood High School. Uh, when I graduated from Northwood, I went to the University of Michigan. Most people, when they hear that, say, why would you possibly want to go to Michigan from Orange County? <laughs> and I tell them that my father went to Michigan, and I was taught at a very young age that, why would you ever want to go anywhere else? And so that's what I did. Uh, when I graduated from Michigan, I went to the U.S. Senate to work for two great senators, Tom Harkin, um, who was a man who once told me when you asked him why you're a Democrat, he would quote Hubert Humphrey and tell you that the moral test of government is how it treats those in the dawn of life, the children, the twilight of life, the elderly, and the shadows of life, the sick, the needy, and the handicapped. And after I worked for Tom, I went to work for Sherrod Brown, um, who's a great, great senator who goes out there and fights every day for working people in this country. And having, you know, having worked in Congress for six years, I like to think that I have more experience in government than both Mimi Walters and Donald Trump. And I think it shows when you look at the Oval Office what happens when you put some, someone who's a complete amateur in, in the, as president. One of the big frustrations I had working Congress that long is there are so many issues, like climate change, which we had, there is no hope that we can do anything about it. There is no, Barack Obama was president for eight years, and yet his last six years, there, no one had any, there was no idea that we would ever pass anything out of Congress for something that I think is the biggest ex ex existential crisis of our time, the most pressing long-range problem the United States faces, and yet no one ever thought we would ever do anything about it. That has to change in 2018. The world community has set a goal that we must limit the growth of uh, the climate change to two degrees, um, and that's the bare minimum. You know, that's to make sure the planet is survivable. It doesn't mean that we won't face devastating impacts. It doesn't mean that people around the world won't potentially die because of climate change. It means that people will still be able to leave, live on the planet Earth. And yet, there's no country on the world that is taking the steps necessary to, to reach those goals. And if, and if we do not take step, those steps by 2020, we may be in a position where we may never, ever be able to reach those goals. And people talk about the American dream. People talk about the idea that your children will have a better standard of living than you will. Um, but it doesn't matter if they have a nicer car, it doesn't matter if they have a nicer house, it doesn't matter if they're Republican, it doesn't matter if they're Democrat, if they can't breathe the air and they can't drink the water. And that's why it's absolutely critical that we take immediate action to address climate change. And the United States has to be the leader in that. The United States has always been the global leader when it comes to addressing the problems of the world. And when Donald Trump pulled out of the Paris Agreement, I thought for the first time in my life, and probably the first time in the life of many people in this room, the President of the United States was no longer the leader of the free world. It was Angela Merkel. When I go to Congress, I will fight for dramatic action on climate change. I believe we need to put a price on carbon. I believe we need the biggest investment we've ever seen in green energy. I believe we need to stop burning dirty fuels like coal. And I believe that we need to stop Donald Trump's rollback of every, sing of every single environmental res regulation in existence. I believe we need to fight a EPA person, who, EPA, uh, appointee who is, does not believe in climate change. I think Mimi Walters has been uh, supported Trump every step of the way and everything he's done, and that she must face the consequences of that in 2018. And I want to close by saying that I know that uh, Irvine, Huntington Beach, and Tustin are working together on a community choice energy plan. I think it's very, very important that they have a, lo a member of Congress who will lo work for the local community to make sure that's put in place. Um, thank you so much for the opportunity to speak here, and I look forward to your questions.